Hi everybody, welcome to day three, section 9-2, adding and subtracting rational expressions notes. Okay, so today we're going to determine the LCM of polynomials again, but this time we're going to simplify complex rational expressions. So we kind of already dealt with complex uh, fractions, but these are going to be a little bit different. Okay, so first let's go through the type of complex fraction that we dealt with um, the last couple of days. So let's go ahead and review this first one. Okay, so we've got b plus a over ab divided by 1 minus b over b. So if you remember what we did yesterday or the day before that, we rewrote this problem as b plus a over AB divided by 1 minus B over B. From here, we took this division, sim we changed this division by a fraction and, and turned it into multiplying by the fraction. Okay, so and at the same time, we can factor if we can. This B plus A stays B plus A over A times B. Now I'm changing it to multiplying by the reciprocal of b over 1 minus b. Okay, and now we can go through and cancel any factors. We've got a b plus a in the numerator. Do we have a b plus a in the denominator? No, we don't. We've got a b in our numerator. Do we have a b in our denominator? Yes, we do. So those b's cancel, and now we just clean up our answer of b plus a over a times 1 minus b. Okay, so that's just a quick review of the complex fractions that we've dealt with. Okay, so now let's go into a little bit different type of complex rational expression. Okay, and there's going to be two methods we can go through solving, or sorry, simplifying these, um, and you choose the method that works for you. Okay, so if you take a look at this example, we have 1 over a plus 1 over b divided by 1 over b minus 1. So if we notice this time, it's different because we're adding fractions in the numerator and we're adding or subtracting more fractions in the denominator. So it's not one fraction divided by another fraction this time. Okay, so we have to treat it a little bit differently because of this plus and minus in the numerator and denominator. Okay, so the first method that we are going to use to solve this complex rational expression is we can simplify the numerator. and denominator separately. So we add, subtract, we combine those guys, okay? After we do that, okay, it becomes the complex fraction as before. So we simplify the remaining complex fraction as we did before. So as before. So like in the previous night's homework. Okay? So what, is it, what does this mean? Well, let's focus on our numerator. Okay? We've got, we'll put our numerator in blue. 1 over a plus 1 over b. Well, remember yesterday when we were adding and subtracting fractions, we needed common denominators. So let's figure out what the LCD of these denominators is. Well, you should recognize that it's A times B. So I need common denominators. So I'm going to multiply the first fraction by B over B and the second one by A over A. Okay, so what is this going to look like? Well, we will get B over AB plus A over AB. Okay? And now this is going to go in our new numerator. When I add those together, we have B plus A over AB. 
okay? Now if we go ahead and we change up or we uh, simplify the denominator. We've got 1 over b minus 1. So let's figure out the LCD of these two guys. Well, this 1 over, or this minus 1 is like 1 over 1, right? So the LCD in this case is just b. So I don't need to multiply this first fraction by anything because I already have a denominator of b but I do need to multiply this second one by b over b. When we simplify that, we get 1 over b minus b over b. Okay, so this is going to be the denominator now, the cleaned up denominator of this complex rational expression. And now that we have the common denominators, we can combine our numerators here. So we're just going to be left with 1 minus b all over b. But again, this now becomes our new complex fraction. So I'm going to put the big division sign in there. And now it looks very similar to what we did up above. Okay, so now from here we can rewrite it as our numerator b plus a over ab divided by our denominator, 1 minus b over b. So now we just change it to multiplying by the reciprocal, and we have the following. b plus a, that doesn't factor any further, over a times b, times b over 1 minus b, and now we go through and we cancel any factors that we can. So we can fact or we can cancel these b's, and we are left with the answer that we had up above. So we are left with b plus a all over a times 1 minus b. Okay, so that's method one. All right, where you combine the numerator, you make it one fraction. You combine the denominator, you make it one fraction. And now we've got a complex fraction the same as before. Okay, so if you like that method, go ahead and use it. The other method that we can use is to multiply every term. by the LCM of what I call the mini denominators. So we have denominators, little denominators within this entire rational, complex rational expression. Okay? All right, so what does that mean? Well, let me rewrite the initial uh, example over on the side. So we have one over a, and I'm going to leave some room, plus 1 over b, all divided by 1 over b minus 1. Okay? All right, so what I do is I take a look, and I want to figure out the LCM or of all of my denominators, or LCD, least common denominator. Okay, so we go through. My first denominator, right here, I write down all of the factors. Okay, so we just have an A. I move on to my next denominator, my mini denominator. We have a B. That is a new factor, so we have to write it down. So we have A times B so far. Now I go to my next mini denominator, this B over here. We already have a B in our LCD or LCM, so I don't need to rewrite it. And then if we look at our, our last denominator here, well, this is like saying 1 over 1, okay? I don't necessarily need to put a 1 over in my LCD. So our LCD is A times B, okay? So now we're going to multiply every term by that. This is a little bit different than getting common denominators. So it's going to look like the following. I'm going to multiply this first term by A times B, the second one, by a times b, 
this third one down here by a times b, and finally this fourth one by a times b. And now we're just going to clean things up. So if we take a look and we simplify this, I can cancel the a's, okay? In my second expression here, 1 over b times a times b, I can cancel those b's. So those b's cancel. In my third expression down here, the b's will cancel again. And in the fourth expression, nothing's going to cancel with 1. So now we just clean it up. Okay. So with this first expression, we're just left with b. I keep my sign plus. With our second expression, we're just left with a. So we have b plus a over my third expression, we're just left with an a. Okay, fourth expression, oh sorry, I keep that sign the same, minus. The fourth expression, we're left with a times b. Okay, so this looks like it's almost done. The last thing I want to do is factor anything that I can to see if anything cancels. So if you take a look in the denominator, they have a common factor of an a. So let's go ahead and factor that out. So we have a b plus a in the numerator over a times 1 minus b. And now I just go through. I have a b plus a in my numerator. Do we have one in our denominator to cancel? Nope. So this is as good as it's going to get. And if you take a look, that's what we got up above, okay? So method one takes a little bit more time, okay? But if you're more comfortable with that, by all means, use it. Otherwise, you can use method two, okay? So let's go on to the back page, and you can try one on your own. Okay, so this example two, I want you to try it on your own using either method one or method two, whichever one you prefer, okay? So um, go ahead, try it on your own, and then uh, see if you get the right answer. Okay, so uh, this is what I got as my answer. I used method two, so I uh, identified the LCD of all of my mini denominators to be xy. Multiplying every term by xy would get me down to that answer, okay? So uh, if you have any questions on this, make sure you ask about them in class tomorrow. All right, and one last thing before we finish up here is we have a ticket in the door tomorrow. So in order to receive full credit for these notes, you need to complete the following, um, the following examples. Okay, here's your ticket in the door tomorrow. And uh, try these as best you can. Hopefully you get them right. Otherwise, have a great day, guys. Bye.